Good evening and thank you very much for the invitation to this session, this very interesting session, which I will not be able to attend personally or streaming because I have a hands-on workshop in my office, but I was allowed to pre-record it. Um, I like Prague very, very much. Here are two images. I have no conflict of interest. And I have to talk about the German evidence-based medicine in varicose veins. I've chosen this because there are so many guidelines, as you can imagine, and I have sticked to varicose veins treatments. Our last guideline was finished in 2019, and uh, it was a S2K uh, register, and it's translated to English. You can find it here in, the, in this DOI. If you have interest, in it, you can mail me. And it is a um, guideline in the in the introduction of it, we found that there is very very little evidence, like one uh, A or one B evidence, in phlebology, uh, because there are very little studies. A lot, although we deal with the most frequent or most prevalent surgical disease, and uh, we have to investigate why this is. I will come back later to this. We had general aspects, uh, diagnostics, conservative treatments, surgical procedures endoluminal thermal and endoluminal um, chemical procedures. So I will go through the recommendations I sorted out as the more representative and important ones because in, 40, 40, uh, in 15 minutes uh, we have to sum up somehow. And I, I want just take the first recommendation out of this guideline which says that the patient should be referred to a vein specialist with sufficient knowledge about the full spectrum. I, I think it's very interesting that in the guideline, the or in the evidence of a, of a treatment, you have to point out that the person needs to be trained in, in the treatment. I, I think this is this or, or always surprises me, but you know, in the in the guidelines, you need to have this because uh, some doctors treat without any knowledge, and this helps the lawyers to go against. Uh, I don't want to read everything. I would, this is the the, the plannings and the, and the indications, but this is um, very important. Highlighted for me, the treatment of varicose vein and its complications can be conservative or invasive. So if the patient comes to you and you are surgically oriented and the patient says, no, I, I don't want to have a surgery, you always can treat him conservatively, which is a great, great uh, plus, which we have in phlebology. You can always give compression stockings, very little exceptions, and you might give drugs. And the other thing I would like to highlight is that this is only one situation where a patient should be promptly treated. This is when there are complications like bleeding, like the patient had a superficial vein thrombosis because in the acute phase you wouldn't, and there is a venous leg ulcer which evidently heals better if you treat surgically the varicose veins. In Germany, lots of clinics are specialized and live from the surgery, and there you have an overindication of treatment. And patients are informed, if you don't treat the varicose veins, you will have a thrombosis. And all this is not evidence-based medicine. Every patient without a bleeding, without having had a thrombosis, without an ulcer, can have stockings or can go to wait and see if it's only C2, if there is no chronic venous disease. And this is a very important point that came out in this, in this guideline. The one important thing on this page is Choice of treatment is dedicated by the will of the patients. And we have to take our time to explain the patients the opportunities he has, the options he has, perhaps the prices he would have to pay choosing one or the other, depending on the systems. And I sometimes observe that one doctor only does, does one treatment because this is the one he knows best, he gets best paid, and this is still not evidence-based medicine. Concerning the exploration, the guideline says that pathological findings from technical examinations should be tested for clinical significance. Because, you know, you sometimes have patients coming complaining with knee pain and they have a big back cyst and this is a big knee problem. And 
also they have a varicose vein. So of course you can tell him yes, that the varicose vein needs to be treated, but the finding, the reflux in the saphenous vein has nothing to do with the pain the patient has. Clinical examination and uh, duplex evaluation has to be carried out in standing position. Um, and you have to be really, again, make sure that you have the correct exploration, that the duplex is the base of the diagnostics and the findings are relevant. Interestingly and differently from other countries, especially from southern countries, I, I gave a lecture yesterday in Cairo virtually, and of course nobody was stopping in Cairo if not necessary or in Egypt because it's so hot. In Germany, we recommend that um, compression stockings should be worn after every treatment you do, um, like uh, liquid sterotherapy of spiders and, 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 and stripping and um, and, and luminal treatments, and there is evidence for this. There's evidence that treating at least one week with compression after any kind of procedure improves the results by sclerotherapy, but diminishes the pain in the case of um, surgical uh, or endoluminal treatments. So um, this is very interesting because in the German guideline, we focus on this uh, very um, interestingly. The next strange and funny thing is that the drugs, which is the only treatment of varicose veins, which is really a 1A or 1B evidence level, aren't reimbursed in Germany. So in the German phlebology, they nearly do not exist. And this is so funny because if you look at evidence, um, they are the most evident treatment options um, Considering that 2000, the reimbursement was uh, withdrawn, um, it is no surprise that the German publications are nearly all older, excepting for a colleague Eberhard Rabe, who is very internationally um, informed and he did do the last survey on this topic in 2011. Concerning surgery, the law of minimum invasiveness, premium, premium non nurture is shall be observed in all measurements. And I think this is very important. This is not evidence-based, but this is this is ethical. And even though Koshiro and reviews give Chiva, you know, I'm a Chiva lover, uh, the least invasiveness, it is really applied in Germany and it is so little reimbursed. So still, we have to always know that guidelines are not evidence and are not the best practice for patients. And the things you do in a country are also not always evidence-based, neither the best practice for the patient. This is a general indication that any kind of surgery might be applied if there is an indication. But I miss at this point the wishes of the patients and the skills of the doctor, because not every doctor should offer everything, but you should have a team where you can send the patient if you don't have the skill for what he chooses. This is very important in my eyes. Coming to surgical recurrences, uh, there is interesting a chapter interesting to how to avoid them after surgery. And they included a result from a study. I, I It was not a study, it was an observation. After this guideline, I came across there is such a huge difference of recurrence rates at the, at the groin site after surgery that I made a little letter to the editor in the VASA because it wasn't a meta-analysis at the end. I looked at all the papers we used for the guideline and looked at the mention is of the thread they used and most of them didn't. I wrote all of them and most of them answered, ah, this is not important. And of course, we used the co correct one, um, even those in this part of the, of the line where the recurrence rate was extremely high. Of course, the thread used was the correct one for their comprehension. And if you have a look in the five to 10 years follow-up studies, all those using non-resorbable or even titanium clips, the wrong ones, had a far lower recurrency rate in ultrasound in the groin level than all those using resorbable thread. And this one from Marianne de Maisonnier was 
non-resorbable at the point of the deep vein and resorbable with all the tributaries. So this was not prospectively evaluated once against the other, but this, this image is so impressive. So if any one of you still does surgery, please, please use non-resorbable threads, because this is, in my eyes, really evident. Coming back to our guidelines, um, to carry out endovenous treatments, the operator shall have a good knowledge. I mean, they're telling us that to drive a car, we need to have a license, and better is to have some experience. It is so sad that when it comes to this easy to apply techniques like the endoluminal ones, the surgical skill to, to make a stripping is obviously higher. In the endoluminal, you can, everybody that knows how to use uh, ultrasound can do them. They have to be aware of phlebology and of phlebology problems. And another very important thing is that sterotherapy, the cheapest one, the one with the patient walking out, no anesthesia, this one can be applied to any patient. We have to remember this because some patients won't have any surgery and won't want to have it. So you have seen along the presentation that I'm not so horribly convinced of evidence-based medicine. And I want to specify this a little bit more. We have the large studies are mostly sponsored by any industry and there is a bias risk. We have a high diversity in the anatomy, in the hemodynamics, in the findings, in the symptoms in venous disease. Thus, really, it is difficult to make good studies. Then we have the difficulties that on this part you have the studies and on this part you have the reimbursement policies and the reality of the country. For example, in Germany, as I've told you, stripping and cosectomy is still the most applied method because it's the best paid. There are lots of public health care insurances that do not reimburse endoluminal treatments. So for my form of thinking, it is not evidence-based medicine. It is not the guideline. It is choosing wisely. It is having a look at where, what does the patient need? What can I offer him in my environment? which is my team where I can send the patient if I can't offer the patients the best options, which is my experience. What does the pain really complain for? And what does he want? And then of course you have to know the studies and you have to have a guideline, which the highest level of evidence offered, which is very low, low in phlebology. But I would change from this EBM to choosing wisely concept, because in my opinion, this is the best for the patient's treatment. Thank you for your attention and perhaps we can meet any of you next year in, in Berlin in the European Venus Forum. I hope lots of you will present articles and abstracts. Thank you and good luck with your meeting.